Saudi Arabia faces new calls tonight to tell all it knows about the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The demands from Turkey and Washington build on the crisis that is already engulfing the Saudi kingdom. Foreign Affairs correspondent Nick Schifrin begins our coverage. In front of a packed parliament in Ankara, Turkey's president today provided the highest level accusation that Saudi Arabia premeditated the killing of a critic. The information and evidence that has been uncovered thus far lead to the conclusion that Jamal Khashoggi was the victim of a gruesome murder. Concealing such an atrocity would hurt the collective conscience of humanity. And in the Oval Office, President Trump echoed that accusation and said the Saudis were trying to cover up crime. It was carried out poorly, and the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. And where it should have stopped is at the deal standpoint, when they thought about it, because whoever thought of that idea, I think, is in big trouble. Combined, the two presidents put extraordinary pressure on Saudi Arabia, and the Turks are providing most of the details. For weeks, Turkish officials have leaked CCTV videos and details of what they've labeled a Saudi hit squad. Erdogan confirmed three teams' movements from the airport to a hotel and to the consulate where Jamal Khashoggi was killed. He also provided small new details. He said one of the teams did reconnaissance in a local forest, presumably to scope where to put the body. He said another team removed the consulate's CCTV camera's hard drive. He asked, on whose orders did the team act? And he rejected Saudi Arabia's explanation that rogue officers acted alone. Blaming this on some security and intelligence officers will satisfy neither us nor the international community. But so far, that's all the Saudis have done, firing Deputy Intelligence Chief Major General Ahmed al-Asiri, Royal Court Advisor Saad al-Qatani, and detaining security official Mahr Mutrib and others. Today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. would revoke the visas and look into sanctioning senior Saudi officials. We have identified at least some of the individuals responsible, including those in the intelligence services, the royal court, the foreign ministry, and other Saudi ministries who we suspect to have been involved in Mr. Khashoggi's death. There were no public accusations today against Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, known as MBS, and accused by U.S. lawmakers of ordering the murder. A Turkish official close to Erdogan tells PBS NewsHour he wants to weaken MBS and was trying to separate MBS from his father, the king, whom Erdogan praised. I do not doubt the sincerity of the custodian of the two mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz. But today, King Salman appeared with MBS in a show of solidarity. They met Jamal Khashoggi's family. At one point, the king points, seeming to deliver a message. In the background, a guard has his hand on his gun. At another point, MBS meets with Shashokshi's son, Salah. They are both stone-faced. Later, MBS made a surprise appearance in what was supposed to be his premier international event. But on stage, oil minister Khalid al-Fala admitted something is rotten in the state of Saudi Arabia. These are difficult days uh, for us uh, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are going through uh, a crisis of sort resulting from uh, uh, the very uh, regrettable and abhorrent uh, incident that took place in Turkey. Uh, nobody in the kingdom uh, can justify it or explain it. But MBS has sidelined all public criticism while claiming to change society. He's allowed women to drive and is proposing to wean the economy off of oil. And Alfala hinted that neither MBS nor the direction he set for the kingdom is changing. The kingdom is in the midst of a historic transformation of unprecedented proportions. Uh, and the train has moved, and it has moved deliberately uh, towards a transformation journey that will not be stopped. But the international criticism of Saudi Arabia is higher than at any point since 9-11, and it's now being led by both President Trump and Erdogan, whose aides hinted he has more evidence that he could release at any point. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin. Nick will be back with more on this story after the news summary.